Good morning, everyone. This is Jen over at Weightless Chronicles, and thank you for joining me. Today, I thought I would record a really quick little video on effortless portion control. Because if you're trying to lose weight and improve your health, chances are good that you're overeating right now. <laughs> even people who you know are at a healthy weight can sometimes overeat without even realizing they're doing it. So there are a lot of different ways you can approach portion control. Some of them you're quite familiar with. We're going to talk about something you're perhaps not, not quite as familiar with and how you can do it in an effortless way that does not require measuring, counting, whatever. It's a different, more effortless kind of way. And you just need one of these. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what you should measure and why. There are different approaches to this. Some people say eat the rainbow, so you might measure how many colors you're eating in a day. Some people say measure your calories, measure your... Um, servings, all that sort of thing. First of all, let me say that yes, servings are very, very, very important. So we talked about nutrition labels a little while ago. And one of the things I shared on a nutrition label that's extremely important when you're trying to improve your health is to be aware of what a serving size is. Now, typically most packaged foods have serving size in terms of cups or ounces or mostly cups and ounces. So, you know, for those of you who don't like to measure out every single thing you're eating before you're eating it, what do you do? Well, you could eat a whole foods kind of diet. The problem with whole foods diet is there's no labels and you're maybe not sure of what portion sizes are because there's no label to tell you what the serving size is, right? So how do you know? And for those of you who are like, well, I can eat as much as I want as long as it's whole foods, maybe possibly, and you'll probably be fine. But again, when it comes to health, if you're trying to lose weight especially, you have to be aware of how much you're eating today in order to reduce it in a way that fits your lifestyle and makes you drop your pounds and reach your goals. So while it is true that if you are a whole foods based kind of diet, which is very challenging to do in the beginning, uh, yes, you maybe don't have to pay as much attention to portions, but you definitely do have to pay attention to portions. All of us have to in some form, shape, or another. So I mentioned that we could use this to measure our portions. 100% accurate. In fact, one of the my favorite authors who talks a lot about uh, f behavior of food and economics and marketing, um, food marketing and that sort of thing. His name is Brian Wansink. He's brilliant and he talks a lot about how to change your environment, how to change your containers so that you effortlessly eat less. So I'll be using a mixture of what he recommends in his books. Some of his books are mindless eating, um, that sort of thing. And I'll also use the power of your hand because everyone has a hand and your hand is naturally inclined towards um, what portion sizes would make the most sense for you because as you notice many of us have different body shapes different sizes different Calorie needs and different serving size needs. So our hands are naturally the right size and shape for us So let's start with mindless eating when it comes to portion control first of all um we know that American foods, especially at restaurants, are up to 40-50% greater in size than they used to be about 50 years ago. And if you have ever been to a restaurant and gotten a plate of food, you notice that there's easily five, six serving sizes within that plate. Uh, if you're not aware of that, then that's something you might want to take a look into in terms of you know familiarizing yourself with the labels and serving sizes and all that sort of thing. But a serving of pasta, for example, is usually half a cup to three-fourths cup. That's not a lot of pasta. It's maybe this much. I mean, it's really a little bit. So especially if you go to Italian restaurants and things, they load up this huge plate full of pasta. That can be up to five or six different serving sizes. So that's why it's important to be aware especially when you're eating out, that in general, American food size portion sizes are larger than they have ever been because it's easy and cheap to produce. And so they give us more and more and more because oftentimes we will ask for more if it's the same price, if we think it's a value or we're saving on cost, if not calories, then we'll go for it, right? We'll be like, well, we're getting more. Why not? Why not just take it? Just like when you're at the office and they have free food, you're like, okay, it's free. I'll just have as much as I want. It's not free in the sense of what it does to your body. That was my little spiel on that. So effortless eating. When you go to a restaurant, when you eat at home, make sure you're using a plate for one, but look at the size of your plate. Um, 
maybe 50 years ago, our regular size dinner plates are probably more like the size of a salad plate. If you don't know what a salad plate is, it's the smaller ones. So uh, you could certainly buy them at any, any regular store. Use a salad plate instead of a regular dinner plate when you sit down to eat. This is important because you don't even have to pay attention to, you know, how many servings you're putting on that plate. There's only so many servings that can fit on that plate. That is the effortless part. If you automatically default to a plate that is two to three inches smaller than a larger plate, then you will fill it up less and you'll be less inclined to go for leftovers as well. Another interesting thing about effortless portion control is if you have evidence of the food you've already eaten, you're going to eat less. And there was a study done with this where people were exposed to as many buffalo wings as they want. Yay, buffalo wings. I love buffalo wings. But if you keep the bones from your buffalo wings next to you, and you can see at a glance how much buffalo wings you've already eaten, chances are good you're not you're going to eat 30 to 40 percent less just because the evidence is right there in front of you. The same holds true for if you you know if you eat candy or other things that come in a wrapper. If you leave the wrapper, the empty wrapper next to you, you're less likely to reach for a second and a third serving of that sort of food because you can see the evidence. It's not something you can hide from. So if you're a person who's a, a you know a binge eater or likes to hide the evidence of your food, keep it out in front of you or assess it at the end of the day. And then you can kind of kind of see without tracking it down specifically, oh, this is how much I have. These are how many servings. These are how many packets are left over. Keep the evidence of what you've eaten in front of you and it'll help you effortlessly control your portion sizes. Use a smaller dinner plate or a smaller serving size bowl. These are automatically ways that you'll serve yourself less and you'll be less likely to reach for seconds. Now that was effortless portion control. Also when it comes to your drinks, research has has shown if you get one of those tall skinny cups, you know like the champagne flutes, as opposed to the big wide like um, wine glasses, if you pour your drink in the tall skinny one, you're, you're more likely to, to serve less liquid inside of that container. Um, so use champagne flutes, use the tall skinny cups, and you'll automatically pour less liquid calories. They even did this study with bartenders who, as you can understand, they know how to pour a certain amount of three ounces, four ounces, five ounces. Even they were tricked by their mind and tricked by the type of container that they were pouring into. And these are veterans. These are people who know what they're doing. So, you know, most of us are not bartenders. If you want to effortlessly drink less, put it in a tall champagne flute as opposed to doing the wide serving size containers like the goblets. Don't do the goblets. <laughs> you automatically drink more. Now, we, we talked about some effortless mind uh, portion control from Brian Wansink's research. The other piece of this is... What was the other piece of this? I'm totally blanking. Oh, so how to serve less. Um, how to count things. So I mentioned already that you should be looking at food labels to see the serving size. How can you incorporate this in a healthy way in your own lifestyle without having to measure and mix and all of that sort of thing? Um, some of it has to do with psychology. Um, the way you serve food, for example, if you put a big plate of steaming family style food on your on your dinner table and you can have as much as you want then you're gonna eat as much as you want and you're gonna keep eating and your stomach won't be able to catch up with you until you've eaten more than you intended to eat never serve family style food always portion it out plate it out and put it on the table and leave the rest of your food either on the stovetop where you cooked it or put it away inside of the fridge you can use the same principle when you go out to eat. As I mentioned, there's like five or six different servings within traditional portion sizes at restaurants. Box it up as soon as it gets to your table and put it out of sight and out of mind. Those are very important things to take note of. So we talked about what about whole foods where, I don't know, portion sizes. Use your hand. Okay, so we know that a serving of cheese, I love cheese by the way, I'm a Wisconsin cheese head, is the size of your thumb. Folks, this is effortless portion control. Our thumbs are unique to us and it fits our shape and size and body. So the size of your thumb, that's a serving of cheese. 
So we're talking the hard cheeses that you cut off the block. It's the size of your thumb. What about meat? Um, they say a deck of cards. That's kind of hard for some of us to visualize, but look at the palm of your hand. The size of your palm is a serving size of meat. That includes fish, chicken, steak, pork, what have you, any of that sort of thing. The size of your palm is how you effortlessly control that. A couple other things for you. So the serving size of an apple. These days, you know, the apples you see in stores are humongous, like they're ginormous apples. Um, apples are usually a small apple. So, um, you know, if you default to the smaller ones, you're fine in terms of effortlessly controlling your calories. Um, when it comes to like a serving of peanut butter, I'm a big fan of nut butters. If you don't have a spoon available to you, one tablespoon is generally half a serving of peanut butter. So if you don't have a spoon, I mean, who doesn't have a spoon? But that's how you kind of measure that off. And no, it's not a heaping tablespoon. If it's heaping, then you're already going into two servings pretty much. It's a level teaspoon, so one thing, or tablespoon. So be aware of that. You know, use the instruments you have available to you in order to measure these things effortlessly. Um, if you're going to um, err on the side of more, do that for your fruits and vegetables. A serving size of vegetables, typically, again, it's in, ser it's in like half cup, one cup, that sort of thing. You're not going to suffer if you have two cups of broccoli instead of half a cup of broccoli. So I wouldn't even recommend measuring your fruits and veggies because the more you can get in, the better you are. <clears throat> but measure your proteins. Again, slice of cheese is the size of your thumb. Meat is the size of your palm. Things like peanut butter, oil, fat, those sorts of healthy fats would probably be... You know, the size of a tablespoon, not a heaping tablespoon. When it comes to avocado, half an avocado is technically a portion size. But again, fat, healthy fats, especially coconut oil, avocado, peanut butter, nut butters, those sorts of things. It's okay to err on the high side for those. Err on the high side for your healthy fats and for your fruits and vegetables. The other things measure. Uh, you can do it effortlessly by using smaller containers such as plates, bowls, um, taller glasses, that sort of thing. That's the effortless way to do it. Also keep evidence of your breadcrumb trail, you know, your empty wrappers, your bones from your wings, um, any sort of evidence of what you've eaten. Keep that front and center so that you can't hide or pretend that you didn't have what you had. Uh, don't spoon things out of a pot when you're cooking things. You know, those calories do add up. And then finally, use your hand for portion control. I will post an additional resource on portion control in the comments of this video. But thank you for joining me today for effortless portion control. If you'd like to learn how to incorporate this into your own life, I offer a complimentary weight loss breakthrough session where we talk about your daily life, uh, what you typically eat, and how to make it even better easier for you to eat healthier without going crazy with counting things and without you know being so anal retentive about what did I eat this or did I not eat this there is a way to make it easy and simple and that's my passion so if you would like to schedule one of those free calls with me go ahead and pop it in the comments say yes give me a call uh, let me call you whatever just say yes to call and then I will connect with you privately if you prefer and then we'll talk about how to schedule one of those free phone calls this is Jen over at weightlesschronicles.com and I look forward to seeing you effortlessly and easily control your portions talk to you soon bye bye